India's housing crisis cannot be solved by an absolute solution that is either propelled by ideas of mass housing or political ambitions of the state represented through statistical hubris. It would rather be necessary to think simultaneously about the design of transitions from existing housing paradigms to newer forms and aspirations for living. For this shift in imagination, the solutions will not lie solely in constructing new homes or housing communities, but we must focus on upgrading, restoring, retrofitting, and improvising around existing systems, as well as rental housing and other transient forms of imagining communities. This diversity and appropriateness would be essential to the formation of sustainable communities in the emerging urban-rural continuum and the contemporary state of urbanization in India, which is in a condition of flux. This, in turn, demands the urgent formulation of an ecology of supporting institutions which is diverse and would ensure equity and serve the future needs of all segments of society in India. বাসস্থান দু কাঠা জায়গা কিনে এক জায়গায় একটা ঘর বানিয়ে বসে পড়লাম ওইটা বাসস্থান ফ্ল্যাট বাড়িতে গিয়ে লোক বাসস্থান না এই যে এখানে আমরা বসে আছি বাসস্থান কারণ এখান থেকে সমাজ সংস্কৃতির সঙ্গে আমাদের যোগ নেই বাসস্থান সেটা হয় যেটা হচ্ছে যে সেইখানকার মাটি পরিবেশ মানুষ সমাজ সংস্কৃতি সব কিছুর সঙ্গে যে যুক্ত হয় फिरवार ओजन के लिए जैसे फिरवार है जैसे फिरवार बदेगा जैसे घर बने ये फिरवार कहाँ बदेंगे फिरवार को कट्टे करेंगे जब फिरवार का घर बनेगा घर का मतलब वो होता है कि आप अपने आप को बिल्कुल महफूज ख्याल करें उस घर के अंदर कि ये घर है इसके अंदर मोहब्बत है लड़ाई झगड़ा सब जगह होता है लेकिन घर का मतलब ये है कि टोटी टोटल मकान जो है वो एक बुनियादी जो है ज़रूरत है रोटी और कपड़ा और मकान इसके बगैर इंसान की जो है ना जिंदगी चल ही नहीं सकती आज हम लोग का घर होना चाहिए जैसे आप उन लोग इंसान हैं तो इंसान घर रहना चाहिए जैसे हर इंसान रहते हैं तो कितना देख के तरस आवत है कि हमारे बच्चे कीचड़ में हैं हमारे बच्चे अंधेरा में रहते रहे हैं तो हम लोग को ऐसा घर चाहिए एक छत होनी चाहिए सर के ऊपर हर किसी को हक है और ये हक अगर छीन लिया जाए तो इंसान कहाँ जाएगा What we found homelessness is in response to failure of a crop. 
people are moving into cities for temporary relief and if that relief can be achieved through the district apparatus we will not really see that scale of homelessness regardless you will see because of the environmental repercussions because of certain economic factors you will see displacement the largest displacement would be through infrastructure projects which is causing more displacement than anything else <laughs> we need to step back and look at the bigger question of what is the nature of change in the country and rethink paradigms because of the penetration of capital and the rapid industrialization of everything that is there all the so called resources whether it's water or forests or land or whatever uh, you're getting this massive displacement um taking place a scale that we didn't even dream of in the in the 80s and 90s um and the pauperization of people the displacement and the creation of homelessness uh and in many senses of statelessness also because they don't belong anywhere anymore to pehla je vistapit thai ne aavya che narmada ke karjan dev ke to ke ukai dem ke vistapit thai ne tame aavya ena thi 40 50 km dur ke 100 km dur to e manas ne eu thase ke hu aa jagya aavi gyo chu mare तेल लेवा क्या जव बराबर है मैं मार बाक ने कही स्कूल में मूको कि मैं पानी काले सवरे हूँ क्या लेवा जाइ जिस पीढ़ी में विस्थापित होते हैं वो पीढ़ी संघर्ष में निकल जाती है अगली पीढ़ी के लिए अपना एक प्लेटफॉर्म तैयार करने के लिए आज हम लोग विस्थापित होंगे मकान बनाना है वहाँ पर नया पूरा सोसाइटी तैयार करना बच्चों को माहौल देना बुजुर्ग यहाँ से जाएंगे जो सत्तर साल अस्सी साल से दशकों से रह रहे हैं वो सब छोड़ के अपनी खेती को बचाना नदी किनारे के लोग हैं जो जुड़े हुए नदी से वो सब जाएंगे नदी हो या तालाब हो जिस गांव में रह रहे हो झरखाली थे पैंतर बच्चे आसी एखे तरह छोड़ नदी है नदी छोड़ नदी झरखाली छोड़ झरखाली थे भाड़ा छिल भाड़ा थार पर खेटे पेटे जैगा टूक कर पुलिस आके पकड़ी करता है बोलता है बांग्लादेशी है ऐसे बोल के पकड़ के लेके जाता है बड़ा आदमी लोग को लेके बांग्लादेशी बना देता है बांग्लादेश में छोड़ के आ जाते हैं अब हम गरीब इंसान पुलिस से क्या लड़ेंगे लीगली इंसान को भी नहीं दे रहे तो अनलीगली को तो क्या देंगे वो तो जी जी करी मिला सर मेरे को उमरा पे जाना है मेरा घर देख लो उनको घर बोले ठीक है घर आएंगे पंद्रह दिन बाद घर आए बोले नहीं नहीं आपका घर नहीं है मेरे घर पे खड़े रह गए मेरे परिवार के सामने मेरे को बोलते आपका घर नहीं ऊपर बंगला ऊपर बंगला है हमारे परिचित की काफिर विधर्मी मालाउन हिंदू शरणार्थी उद्वस्त रिफुचि अनुप्रवेशी बहिरागत तो हमारे देश नहींिकारी तुम बसस्थान क्या दुकाटे जगह दलिल नहीं बस आल के तुले दीते The state of housing in India can be looked in pragmatic terms. It can be looked at uh, as demand and supply and the deficit. 
uh, but it can also be looked at as the culture, the culture that we are constructing around ourselves to occupy space, the space of inhabitation. Uh, and uh, the implications of that are massive because the implications are the communities we build, the relationships we build between different people, uh, the kind of cultures we construct uh, off a place. These images actually lock us into an imagination of the habitat. So Mumbai aspires to become Singapore and Dubai, and then looking at Mumbai, Sholapur, uh, and Nasik uh, aspire to become Mumbai. It is a response really to capital. It's a response in this kind of neoliberal uh, landscape that we live in where the house has become commodity and the new metrics is one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom hall and kitchen. Uh, it has nothing to do with income groups but it also has nothing to do with the need, the aspiration and the condition that we find uh, ourselves in. What people forget is that even now, India has about six and a half lakh villages. So even when we go to 1.5 billion, my expectation is that we might be about half urban and half rural. Uh, and it's not a bad thing for us to be that. Not only because of the way that in India has been historically, but um, there are some basic things that cities can't provide. If it's still very much a rural question, it is still very much a question of the biomass. So it means also protection of the biomass through which we produce their own housing and housing resources, basically. Uh, it doesn't mean that people have to live uh, in so-called kacha housing, but if that is their choice, that all people should have choice, that is also a, a reality. And that too is being now raped looted because it's being used for other things. So access to water, access to the forests, access to the fields, that's going to the commons. Um, being able to cattle herd, to be able to move around you know, um, freely, all that is being restricted. Uh, so there's a whole other set of relations which are not even talked about in terms of housing. <laughs> એટલે ઘરો પણ હવે શું છે પાકી દિવાલો બનવા લાગી પાકી દિવાલોની ડિમાન્ડ એવું થયું કે ભાઈ ઈંટની આપણે ચણતર કરીએ છે પણ એમાં શું થયું કે ઈંટ બનાવવા માટે માટીની જરૂર પડી એટલે માટીનું ખોદાણ ચાલુ થયું એટલે જે ડુંગર વિસ્તારો હતા કે જે પડતર જમીનો હતી એમાંથી માટી બધી કાઢવા લાગ્યા જે ઈંટના જે વેપારીઓ છે કે ઈંટના ભટ્ટાવાળાઓ એટલે એ રીતે જમીન પણ જે ફળદ્રુપ હતી એ ઓછી થતી ગઈ ભલે ઘરો પાકા બનતા છે પણ જમીન ઓછી થતી જાય છે ને એ માટી ઘરમાં વપરાય છે ઈંટ તરીકે બરાબર છે એટલે જે ભૌગોલિક પરિસ્થિતિ એ બિલકુલ બદલાવા લાગી છે હવે architects as well as uh, urban practitioners are looking at rural housing through a lens of urban sprawl. Therefore, you have administrators who are taking the same bylaws of the city and plastering it all over the countryside, be it rural, semi-rural or even, you know, semi-urban settings. I think we need to create avenues where interventions, be it design intervention, 
or usage of material or the energy consumption has to be distinctly defined through a set of codes which will be different from what an urban code will look like. I'd like to define it as an inevitable consequence of the broad shift in our economy from an agrarian base towards an urban manufacturing and services base. This is happening quite rapidly. And I don't think our cities, and particularly the land and development policies of the cities, are geared to use this process as a means of providing affordable shelter for integrating these new populations quickly into urban economies so that it produces a distribution of wealth in the process. This lack of attention to who is coming, where they would need to be settled, how they would gain their income and improve their quality of life, that's the housing problem. Fundamentally, the problem we are facing right now is that we haven't planned for the urbanization. And part of not planning for urbanization is not providing houses for people. So we haven't taken account of the fact that human beings need residences which are of a certain standard, which are safe, which are healthy surroundings, which lend themselves to productivity, which are located in a certain relationship to where people work and so on. People work and live near each other. Their neighborhoods constitute the workforce. And this is somehow unable to creep into the formal planning systems of cities. So it's always outside the remit. So the municipal administration is free to ignore them because they're not part of the planned legal structures that the municipality looks at. And as long as this is like 5, 10, 15% of the population, it doesn't impact the formal city. But the minute it reaches the kinds of dimensions that it's reaching in many cities, it becomes a serious crisis. Actually, when we are looking at numbers in uh, most year one cities, more than half of the slums have come on government land. So essentially, dealing with it through a government mechanism by bringing in the trunk infrastructure, providing them with water supply, sanitation, would be an easiest thing till such time you upgrade them into some kind of pakka house form. When you talk of rapid urbanization, I don't think it's right to extract housing and talk about it as if it were a distinct entity to be thought about separately from all the rest. Uh, more housing means not just more plots on which to build the housing, but more land on which to build all the ancillary urban systems that go with living in an urban area. The way a slum dweller would, would engage with a certain public space and the way I would, it would be quite different. So this has to be studied. 
because the women will have different set of requirements and they will have to be addressed family mein kam se kam to 15 16 17 log rehte hain to chhota sa ghar mein to uspe to kam se kam char to aurte hain ladkiyan hain bahu hai beti hai aaj bhi hamare basti ki aurte jo hai periods ke dauran jo wo lab ki news nahi karti hai unke paas itna paisa nahi hai वो कपड़ा का इस्तेमाल करती है कहीं सुखाने का जगह नहीं है धोने का जगह नहीं है रात का इंतजार करती है रात को का उनके लिए कम से कम तो मतलब एक अच्छा सा एक जगह बने बाथरूम बने जहाँ पर वो खुलकर अपना मतलब वही एक जगह है जहाँ सकून से थोड़ा रहता है वो भी जगह उनको नहीं मिलता है This was called a Nagari Nivara housing, which is uh, near Dindoshi. It was envisaged by socialist leader Munal Gore and uh, Babu Rao Samant, and they decided to fight for the land which they could get out of the urban land ceiling, and they wanted to build for poor. Uh, specifically, we could provide something for women. We provided a crash in every cluster. we allotted spaces for women shelter homes so emergency shelter homes because a, a woman you know who's suffering from domestic violence and if she really has to walk out at the middle of the night there has to be a place for us and this is what we talk about in the women's movement and we want to spread this that the city should be uh, gender friendly mahilaye ye kehti hai ki pati bahar ke ghumne wale hai इनको तुमने हजारों रुपया लाखों रुपया भी दे दिया है तो इसमें भी महिला को भी सही उसके साथ में शामिल करना चाहिए जोड़ना चाहिए क्योंकि आदमी कहता है गांव निमाड़ का तुम महिला हो तुम पैसों को क्या जाने तुम कारोबार को क्या जाने आदमी जो करेगा वो सही लेकिन आज की महिला ये कहती है कि हम सब कुछ जानते हैं हमारा भी अधिकार उतना ही होना चाहिए जितना आपका है हमको घर परिवार चलाना रहता है बच्चों को पढ़ाना लिखाना रहता है आगे बढ़ाना रहता है जात बिरादरी में शादी शादी ब्याहों में जाना रहता है हर काम हर फर्ज हर धर्म को हमें निभाना पड़ता है तो सारी कठिनाइयाँ हमारे ऊपर आती है पहले तो जो जो काउंसिलर है जो पार्टी के लोग हैं उनको भगा कर औरतों को हाथ में मैं दे देती पावर क्योंकि एक औरत बहुत अच्छा सा घर संभाल सकती है तो अपना बस्ती को भी संभाल सकती है अपने देश को भी संभाल सकती है the state wants to recognize housing as a need of the poor but it wants to recognize housing without recognizing poverty and without recognizing vulnerability so the positive part of the state intervention i think there is hardly any evidence on ground in any city of the country where you actually see that the delivery has happened to the poor for example one of the biggest interventions which the state has made in the name of the poor is the land ceiling act right but if you start looking at all spaces which were reserved for housing for the poor all spaces which were uh, or plots which were given to the poor we find ki all of these have been appropriated by non poor classes public private partnership is the key private developers are willing to participate in uh, building this affordable housing story in india so i think we need to find innovative uh, uh, ppp structure so that developers are keen to participate so it it has to be attractive to the developer to come in and participate what we've seen is this whole different avatars of slum rehabilitation schemes slum development authorities slum rehabilitation authorities is that it is creating rights of private developers on slum lands what we see in terms of delivery of houses is only 10% of the land which is encumbered this is virtually blocking any other form of rehabilitation you can't bring in slum upgradation you can't bring in trunk infrastructure the intervention of government has to be essentially on land and services because if you look at individuals particularly in smaller places uh, or smaller towns 
can manage to build their own house. Even in Mumbai, if you look at some of the slum houses, they have managed to build in terms of construction quality and materials and other things, a reasonably good house. What they cannot individually do is the infrastructure. And the government has to concentrate on increasing the supply of land, of service land, that is by extending the infrastructure. I think the most important thing for the governing authority to do is to ensure that land is made available to accommodate each income group distributed across the city. In particular, uh, I think it's vital to avoid flinging out the poor to the outskirts of the city on the argument that that is where land is cheap. जीने के लिए पानी जरूरी है जीने के लिए हवा जरूरी है इसी तरीके से जीने के लिए एक छत भी जरूरी है और इसको सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला भी है कि भाई दिस राइट टू शेल्टर इज पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ राइट टू लाइफ जिस बंदे की हैसियत नहीं है कुछ भी किसी भी तरीके का एक मिनिमम शेल्टर अफोर्ड करने के लिए तो उस मिनिमम शेल्टर को इंश्योर करने के लिए अपने पास अपने देश करना ऐसा कोई कानून नहीं है ये <laughs> Well, I think the housing problem is more in the mind of certain kinds of policymakers. It's very different operationally on the ground. And it's been so for a long time. And the other thing, of course, it did not recognize is that the bulk of housing in this country is not designed, is actually largely auto-constructed. Uh, certainly in rural areas, and also in the bulk of our urban areas across the country. So if you've missed the core mode of production, uh, you miss the process by which um, houses and homes are created, which is really a cultural process in some senses. It is those individual households who get together the money, who hire a small contractor or put in the equity themselves in terms of their work themselves and build their own house. The pattern is of incremental growth. जिसके पास थोड़ा पैसा आ जाता है तो थोड़ा ईट वगैरह देकर थोड़ा रूम को ऊंचा करते और ये तख्ता देकर लकड़ी का तख्ता देकर उसको एक फ्लोर का तरह वो बना देते हैं उसको मचान बोलते हैं हमारे भाई के पास थोड़ा पैसा था तो वो सात आठ हज़ार रुपये खर्च करके वो पटरा लगा कर वो मचान बना दिया तो मैं उस मचान पर मैं खुद रहती हूँ वहाँ पानी गिराने का जगह नहीं है और खड़ा होने की भी जगह नहीं है We are already late in looking at the new materials we need to put together to produce at least a neutral carbon environment. Just now, you can't think of anything which is beyond steel, concrete, bricks, glass. And if you look at 1930s, 40s, we had a palette of building materials which actually helped in creating different forms of housing. Because of super-reliance on just one material, we find that what we are building is unsustainable in terms of the energy consumed in that, the resources which are being deployed. So it would be much more appropriate if we can bring in 
the whole range of material right from country board to using stone to using mud and other materials which are now seen as some form of alternate technology traditional craft in this country it's been there but not many people have scaled the craft it still remained a craft you can make it a manufacturing you can take any of these crafts today and you know make it you can scale it up or you make the choice whether you want to or not or you want to leave it as a craft but then give opportunity to those craftsmen to flourish and don't replace it by some mechanized or manufactured product if you want the production of homes or production of shelter in and around cities to also be a powerful engine for the distribution of wealth in the city then it makes sense to adopt industrial technologies of a scale where more people can participate in production so if i'm only building 20 story buildings in my city i can probably identify 10 15 agencies that can undertake such a project but if i want to build five four story five story buildings to house the same number of people i can identify 5000 people who can undertake such projects ஒரு வீடு நின்றாக்கா அந்த வீட்டில் வந்து எவ்வளோ பிரச்சனை இருக்குது தெரியுங்களா ஒரு மாதம் தான் விடுறாங்க அடுத்த மாதமே காலி பண்ணிவிட்டு எங்களுக்கு வீடு வேணுன்றாங்க நாங்கள் திடீர்னு எங்கே ஓட முடியும் சொல்லுங்கள் ஒரு வீடு போய் தேடி கண்டு போனால் அட்வான்ஸ் முக்கியமாக கேட்குறாங்க ஆறாயிரம் ரூபாய் ஏழாயிரம் ரூபாய் ஒரு யூனிட்டி ஏழு ரூபாய் அப்படின்னா எங்கே இந்த சம்பாதிக்கிற காசு அதுக்கே கொடுத்துட்டு நாங்கள் என்ன செய்ய சார் செய்ய முடியும்னு சொல்லுங்கள் இன் ஆர் சிட்டிஸ் டுடே தே ஹவ் பிகம் ஸோ ப்ராப்பர்ட்டி மைண்டட் அண்ட் ஸோ permanent solution minded that there is not a single interim solution that we think of we patients who are chronically ill we don't have a housing option for them you know the families who come in and accompany these patients there is not a single uh, students or single migrants women migrants where are the spaces so there's a whole range of shelter solutions that also need to be found for this let's say migrant or mobile population that is not looking for a home to buy you know the policies of the colonial government and of course we are also inherited that mostly this it's a deliberate disregard to the working class and to poor it so happened that when the city started flourishing and there was more appropriation of space for capital accumulations the people who had accumulated wealth invested in the housing and that's how the chawls came in the chawls which we see four to five story chawls with the mill workers stayed of course it did help the mill workers but the intention was to invest in the land and to get the returns through the rent the present policy of where we are talking about housing for all seems to miss out that it's not that everybody who is has moved into the city has moved in permanently and requires an ownership house and therefore a large chunk of an affordable housing segment has to be rental housing so the people that you are talking about who are transient who will be there and that cuts across all strata of society even the 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 white collar job people are not con- moving into the city forever so therefore you also have to have a large chunk of uh, housing which is in the rental segment and it certainly cannot be i believe the standard 1 bhk 2 bhk it has to be something else a lot of intervention from uh, planners engineers point of view have been driven by health and safety 
but the way you draw the health and safety line also has the price implications. So if you draw the line too high in terms of income scales, then large number of people cannot afford that legally minimum house. When you talk about affordable housing, we often forget that the term is meaningless without affordable transport. Transport that's affordable both in terms of cost as well as in terms of time spent. Adequate housing includes several dimensions. Affordability is one of them. So the other dimensions of adequate housing are a security of tenure, cultural adequacy, infrastructural adequacy, locational adequacy. You also talk about accessibility, livability. Affordability only is one dimension. Today, we don't even have a demand-led concept of affordability. So affordability for us in India, the way we define it, is highly supply-led. Housing is something which is incremental. Housing is not necessarily a permanent creation which stays like one forever. It's a need. You can always recreate housing. You can change housing. Living in an informal area actually informalizes the people. But the way it is read in the government is it read as illegal you know so the people become illegal it's the land that's illegal but it's the people that have become uh, illegal and then that becomes the reason for you to qualify or not to qualify for future land uh, or housing provisions so there's a certain kind of materiality of life, of getting these things, which then make that space a home. Because when they're trying to get all those things, it means that they have to get along with other people, they've got to form a group. There's a whole experiential process of getting your home. If we start to expand the definition, to look at the process, to look at what constitutes the boundary of the house or the home, removing the term house and focusing on homes. Uh, also removing term slums, because I feel that that again locates it in a kind of marginality, which removes political agency. So housing is, is not um, a thing that you can produce and give or even if you give it or make it available on, on financial terms. It's something that, that is produced through struggle, life, and it's about primarily not housing, but about dwelling. The terms have to change, uh, that we think of it differently. It's about living in a place in, in, with security and, and in dignity. And that is the biggest issue today, that um, their people are not only living in insecurity, and impermanence, we're living in under terror. घर तो हम बनाते हैं, हमारा पूर्वजों का बनाया है, उसको मानते हैं, फिर एक गांव को भी घर मान लेते हैं, खेत को भी मतलब अपने हिसाब से घर मान लेते हैं, पंचायत को भी मतलब घर मान लेते हैं, देश को भी मान लेते हैं, लेकिन घर जैसा रहे, घर जैसा लगे तो उसको घर मानने जाता है नहीं तो उसको घर मानने की क्या जरूरत है